Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. So this is going to be the introduction to my SCADA system. It's been a uh, long time coming. I have sort of put these videos off for quite some time. I wanted to uh, sort of let this thing mature before I spent uh, the time, the effort, and the money on the videos and the rest of the equipment. I wanted to make sure what I had sort of came up with was going to be its final rendition. I didn't want to make any mistakes in its final implementation and in these videos. I didn't want to have to back up and say, well, I said this, we tried that, but it didn't work. I wanted this just to be, um, be fluid, I guess I should say. I want to give you a quick walk around sort of where we're at. I've changed some stuff up in here. Let's take a look at it. One of the things that bothers me about a lot of YouTubers is they take you around and they don't really show you their places. You know, they don't give you a good visual of like, you know, here's my shop, here's this room in here. And uh, I want to show you around in here. Y'all have been in here before. I don't know that I've officially shown it to you. I built some workbenches and I wanted to keep this room in here sort of clean. This is a place I could come in here and build an engine or something. And I put this wall in here. This used to be here. I built the upstairs of the female. She's kind of a hobby silversmith and she's got a bunch of her silversmith stuff up there. But I built this room in here as sort of a prototype, electronic, uh, maybe a antique restoration. I got a bench in here and I wanted to keep this clean. Rebuild a carburetor type stuff. I actually just overhauled a carburetor for a friend of mine right here. And uh, anyway, I had a lot of stuff and it was not very well organized and I wanted to be able to organize it. I've just got all kinds of I don't know, just stuff everywhere. And uh, this is kind of a good place to put it all. I've got electronic components, you know, all kinds of solder on things, and, and there is a lot of stuff here also for the uh, for the SCADA system. So, so real quickly, some of the requirements I had for the SCADA system was that I wanted all the parts of it to either be extremely robust or relatively inexpensive. Uh, things in the oil field get blown up electrically, they get sprayed with salt water, they get stolen, uh, their stuff gets shot more than you could ever believe. People drive out there with a rifle and just want to blow holes in things. Uh, and you know sometimes, I mean there's cows everywhere. Cows like to chew everything up. If you've never been around cattle, they're like big giant rats. They chew and destroy. They're the most destructive thing you can ever imagine. Um, and I also wanted the system to be, relatively speaking, inexpensive. You know, I didn't want to just hire a company and spend, you know, fifty or a hundred thousand dollars on a SCADA system. I wanted it to be, uh, you know, reasonably priced for something that, you know, I felt like you get your money's worth. And I have probably close to ten thousand dollars by the time we're done in this whole system. But uh, you know, I think that that was much, much cheaper and is easier to maintain. There's a lot of advantages to what I've came up with here that we're going to get into in later videos. Now, with the SCADA system, what exactly did I want to accomplish? So, the, the one of the biggest things that I wanted to be able to do initially was to have a camera system so I could look and, and look at the wells. I could see if something was leaking. It's common to get a bunch of rain. It makes it difficult to get around in the, in the muddy roads. And instead of taking a four-wheeler or trying to mud in there in a four-wheel drive pickup, it's great if you can pick your phone up, open up some kind of app, and look at a camera. And that's initially where all this stuff started. After that, I realized that it was necessary that if you have a leak and it's midnight and you see something, you don't want to have to get up in the middle of the night to drive out there and go turn something off. You want to be able to shut it down. And so that was my second uh, sort of step, is I wanted to be able to first monitor visually and the second was to be able to, uh, to shut it down. Uh, after I sort of got to that point when I started thinking actual SCADA system is I wanted to be able to monitor several things and, and as I sort of snowballed down this hill you know I thought well if I can do this you know doing that is very simple. Uh, basically my first step was I wanted to be able to monitor levels in my water tank and the one of the most common, not that it's really that common, but the, I should say common's not the right word. One of the easiest environmental disasters to have is to have a failure in your water injection system of some kind. And there's a whole slew, a whole number of problems you can have from electricity goes off, you know, you get a sprinkle and it burns the belts off the pump, maybe the, the power cycles and it blows the fuses in the, in the, in the panel and the, and the motor won't run. Maybe you get a leak, you know, your, your switch that turns the water pump off and on, uh, get some 
crap in it. You know, perhaps you pick up some trash and it sucks it up in the pump and the pump quits working. There's all these slew of problems. You know, there's so many dozen issues you can have to have a problem with your water injection system. These wells that I've got all produce a high percentage of water and they're, you know, the water's pumped through a separator, it's separated, it goes into a water tank and then from this water tank it's pumped through the pump back into the ground. Well, there's often times on these water tanks there's collects some oil and if for some reason your pump doesn't come on or, you know, whatever problem you have that your tank runs over, uh, the first thing that happens is that oil that's collected on top runs over and then the water carries the oil out to wherever it's going and you just have a, uh, you know, a, a big problem really quickly. And we have eliminated most of these issues before the SCADA system with our water injection system by having high level shutdowns in our tanks. So our water tanks have got an additional switch at the top and if the water level gets up to this point, it's got a signal wire that carries, you know, sort of mechanically, if you would, not through computers and SCADA systems, you know, an actual, you know, 120 volt signal back that shuts the lease down. And that itself has eliminated that issue for us a lot, but I wanted to be able to monitor my water level real time. I wanted to be able to uh, both see, like right now where it's at, but I wanted to be able to graph it out. And we can use that graph uh, you know, to compare days or weeks or months uh, of data to see if you know, something's happening, something's changing. You know, if the pump's losing efficiency, if the pump doesn't run as much, that might be an indication that there's a well going off, it's not producing as much fluid. If, um, you know, if the water level begins to creep up in the tank over time, there might be a failure of your, of your switch. Anyway, that was the initial most important thing that I wanted to monitor with my SCADA system was water tank level. Now, um, we're going to show all this in, pre in, in, in later videos, but basically what I end up buying I don't know if I've got one together. As Big Clive often says, one moment please. <laughs> so this is a Labjack T4 board. It originally had a red housing that goes around it. I wrote in bad on this because I've blown it up. But um, this originally had a plastic housing. It looked like a, you know, end user product. And I have dehousinged it because it's going in my own housing with, uh, with some other things. Now this has got the capability of running a dozen or so different sensors and I originally had set it up only to measure uh, water tank level. I need to back up for one second. I spend about a third of my time driving around checking things. I make my leases every morning in oil field. This is called a pumper. I don't know exactly where the name came from, but a pumper is someone that's sometimes hired or you know me, I work for myself. Uh, they just drive around and check stuff. You know, I spend a lot of time greasing things, but a lot of my time is literally spent driving to a location, putting my eyes on something, make sure there's no issue with it, and driving back home. And I had originally wanted to build the SCADA system as sort of a helper or a, what would the right word be, a, a, like a supplement to me, to help me out. And as this become more advanced, I realized that I could actually do a better job with cameras and sensors and computers and that kind of stuff then I could be physically actually being there and so now I have freed up a lot of that time that I used to spend just driving around looking at stuff and I can spend that working on something else and I am sort of a supplementation to the SCADA system not the other way around anyway back to where I was you know I originally wanted to only measure you know one or two things water tank level and I realized having the capability with this already being out there, being paid for, being put in and implemented and everything, you might as well expand what you're trying to do to be able to do a much better job. And you can do things like, you know, measure your separator pressure. Your separator pressure is an indication of your flow line. It goes all in your separators through all your, you know, T's and everything back to all your wells. It's kind of like a spider. If you have a leak at your very back well or you have an issue somewhere, you're going to see a drop in your separator pressure. Well, if you measure your separator pressure, that's a really good indication that you don't have anything going on the ground. The, um, the other thing you can do is you can measure through a digital input, and we're going to talk about digital analog in the next video, but you can measure how many hours per day, or what I'm doing is actually putting out a percentage number, what percentage per day your water pump runs. 
And this has probably actually become one of the most used or useful pieces of information that this thing has put out to me is simply percentage number. And I can graph today, yesterday, and it puts out a percentage of, you know, 58% or 73%. And if that percentage number goes down, you know that there's a problem. It's possible you've got a leak. You know, most likely it's a well has went off, there's a pump went bad, a tube been leak or something. Um, also, if that number goes up, it means that there's probably something wrong with your pump. The other important thing they were measuring is the injection pump output pressure. Uh, and this is a great indication if you might have either an issue with your pump, if the pressure goes down, the pump's not pumping correctly. Of course, this will be also showed in how quickly your water tank level comes down while the pump's running. And graphing this stuff out, we'll also, well, I will show you all this in a later video, but graphing this stuff out where you can see several days at a time gives a extremely, I mean, instant, you know, you can look at it and say, there is something not right there. Uh, but just the way the, you know, the curves and everything, all these, all these different pressures go. Anyway, that's also the injection line pressure gives a good indication if you might have an injection leak. Uh, I have went through our entire systems from the well heads all the way back to the injection wells, uh, not including the actual separators. There is no steel. It's all stainless brass or poly and leaks for us are kind of a thing of the past unless you have some kind of a, um, well, I'll just tell another story. So the very first lease that I implemented this system on, it was a very simple setup and I was measuring separator pressure, water tank level, and water pressure. And I actually, it was about the second or third day that I had this system running and it had wires hanging out of it. And if you walked up and touched it, you got electrocuted. But it was just enough that it worked. And the program I, have, I was running was actually uh, on a... Um, what do you call it, a trial version. Anyway, I landed bed, and it wasn't very late. It was probably 7 o'clock or something. It was still daylight. And I was trying to write scripts and trying to make this program work. And as I'm laying there, I'm watching this, and the separator pressure starts dropping. It goes from like 30 PSI over a few minutes down to like 5. And I'm thinking, you know, does it normally do this? Is this just something that I don't ever see? You know, I don't sit there and watch it for no hours anyway I sat there and watched a while and finally I got up and I drove out there uh, and it was just about dark and there had been a bunch of hunters out there and they had I don't know what they were doing but they had this tree that was about 20 or 30 yards away from their camp that was about this big around and they had shot it in two I mean I don't know how many hundreds of rounds they put through that thing well, anyway, I had a flow line that ran out through, through the trees, and they had shot three or four. I think there was three holes in two different lines. There was one. There was a hole in one line and two holes in another line. You know, just by chance. You know, just shooting across the pasture, they just blown into holes all in it. It didn't turn out to be any big deal. You know, I saw them the next day and kind of griped them, but it didn't really matter. It didn't cost too much to fix it. Uh, but that was the second or third day or within the first week of, of actually turning this stuff on I caught a um, I caught a problem so to sort of run back over and have a recap and talk about the other things I had talked about I wanted to do my SCADA system I want to be able to look at my wells on a camera if I had a problem I want to be able to shut my wells down from anywhere I can get internet service anywhere I can get my cell phone using an app I want to be able to monitor a set of parameters Water tank levels, oil tank levels, separator pressures, injection pressures, uh, pump run times. There's a few other we'll get to later. I wanted to be able to measure these parameters. I wanted to be able to write simple scripts and a program that would use a little bit of logic to decide whether or not these parameters are showing a problem or they're at least if something I need to look at. And if it sees a problem, I wanted it to, one, be able to send me a text message, and two, I wanted it to also be able to take control of this app-based whatever we're going to use. And I'll just, I don't have one in here, I'll show you, but I, I actually use some little YZ cheap cameras and YZ smart plugs to turn these wells off and on. We'll go all over that later. But I wanted this 
SCADA system to be able to take over if it sees a major malfunction. Like it says, hey, your water tank is about to run over. You have got to shut this down. And I'm in there snoring. I want it to be able to take over and turn that lease off. And when I wake up in the morning, if it's a false alarm and that happens a couple of times a year, that's a whole lot better than driving up on a big mess. The other things is I wanted it to be relatively compact and simple to use. I wanted it to, to be something that I could sell and have someone, if it's something blows up, I can just hand them something and say, hey, we'll plug this in. The last and probably one of the most important aspects of it too is I wanted it to be able to run without electricity. That's a big issue. Power goes off all the time. And if the power goes off, your pump won't run. And if your pump is hooked up to a different power supply, if it's a different set of transformers in your wells, well, you can have the same issue to, uh, you know, to run your tank over. I wanted this to be able to run without power, and I wanted it to notify me immediately. If the electricity goes off, I want to get a text message that says, hey, such and such lease, power off, or something like that. Um, that's about the introduction. I know this was long and I did a bunch of talking, but I wanted to be able to explain, sort of lead you into what I'm trying to accomplish here. The rest of these videos will probably be shorter. I want to keep this as, how do I put this? Not, not simple, but easy to understand. And I would like it to be something that's useful for somebody that's interested in trying to do something like this. I want, um, I want, it, I want it to be able to be understood and for someone else to make it either as complicated or as simple as they like because I think that this could be used not just in the oil field but for you know a whole slew of, 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 of things. You know, If you're a chicken farmer and you want to measure something that's got to do with chickens, I don't know what it'd be, I want you to be able to dream up something that you could do and use a system like this and I wanted to sort of show you how I did it. Um, I guess that's all of this video i got several more coming up i'm going to probably sort of group these together uh, i got this one and a couple more coming out and then i'm going to start the videos on the new lease i may have already had one or two of those out by the time you see this also please keep in mind that this has been running for over a year and there is a lot of this video that's got pieces that were were shot and chopped up especially the ones coming up i mean this one was all real time but uh, the videos coming up you'll have excerpts and, and pieces that were from over a year ago this I mean doesn't make any difference but just realize that's what is going on um, but uh, y'all sick of hearing me rattle yet <laughs> that's it this is SCADA system part one there's gonna be a whole bunch of parts of it let's uh, jump into it <laughs>